Hello people, this is a 6F35 Ford transmission. You can find these in a Ford Escape, a Ford uh, uh, Fusion. You can also find them in Transit Connects. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and tear this down here, show you common issues with it. First step, while it's still in the jack, pull, um, grab the torque converter, slide it out. I don't have a mount or tripod today, so I'm going to have to just make things work here. But basically, just with one hand, grab onto the stud. With your other hand, grab onto the stud and slide it out. Something like that. It just slides right out. Go ahead and get your transmission on the bench now with this part of it facing up. Alrighty. I'm going to choose to go ahead and pull the valve body out first. So just uh, tilt it over like that. Then you can have access to the valve body cover. I'm going to take a a chalk marker here and mark the locations of the uh, the 8mm uh, bolts here. There's uh, more 13mm uh, studs than the bolts, so I'm just going to mark the uh, locations of the uh, bolts there. There's one up here. Don't miss that. Go ahead and zip these bolts off, the 8mm bolts here. So next, I'm going to go ahead and get the studs off, 13 millimeter. Drop them somewhere you're going to forget. I'm going to pause you there. Alrighty, with all those uh, studs and bolts off of there, you can slide this off. Inspect for debris and metallic. Contamination in the bottom of here, clean it out. Okay. Next you're gonna to wanna to pull this grommet off of here. And yeah, the lead frame's damaged right here, I'm aware of that. Okay, so common issues in here, shift solenoid B. It'll cause a delayed two to three upshift and delayed reverse. Um, that's about the only common issue in the valve body there. Occasionally they're sticking valves and stuff, but that's not super common. Okay, so get your uh, lead frame harness disconnected here. Set it aside. And uh, disconnect your range sensor. Pull it back. Pull it out of the loop here. There you go. And you will have a 10 millimeter nut right here. Take that out. Set it aside. Set that in there, actually. Okay. And now you have, I believe, 22. Uh, that's loose. Uh, 22 uh, of these Torx 30 screws. Go ahead and take them out. Uh, long story short, I do believe this to be a workmanship issue on this transmission. If you want more information on that, I, I published a video on that right before this one. And... Uh, you will see all the things wrong with how it was installed. And this one's already loose right here. Yeah, something's going to be workmanship related. Oh boy. Just work, go all the way around, get every single Torx 30 bolt loose in here. A little something like that. Go ahead and get all these bolts off and put them somewhere safe. Just so you know, there are two different length bolts that go in here. There's shorter and longer ones, and the longer ones go on the raised partitions part of the valve body, the higher part, and the shorter bolts go on the lower part. All the Pretty much all the bolts in here are lower down than these. It'll make sense to you when you see it. Next, I'm gonna set the valve body aside, and pull it out. There's the rear gasket there, no problem with that. When you go back to install the valve body when you're reassembling the transmission, this uh, manual valve aligns with that rod right there, okay? These are the two feed tube seals that go into these holes here. They're for the forward clutch and the low reverse clutch. Take your output shaft speed sensor out. Inspect for de damage or debris. Flip the transmission up like this. Go all the way around. Remove your 13 millimeter bolts. 
there's a stud right here. Note, notate that, mark it if you have to. And then there's some bolts inside the bell housing, four of them. And then there's two right down here. Remove them all. All right, once you've got all those bolts taken out, go ahead and get a pry bar, a big daddy, and stick it right here, okay? Get it under that ledge and just give it a nice firm pull. You're not gonna break anything, but I'm an idiot, don't listen to me. All right, see how it's slid up all the way around? That's good. If you wanna pull a little more on, just make sure gingerly pull it up there. But as you can see, it's broke loose. Next, you're gonna to want to, with one hand here and the other hand here, pull straight up and flip the whole converter housing on its back. Okay, make sure your uh, bearing here didn't stay on here. If it did, just stick it back here. Uh, that likes to stick to the back of the pump sometime. Which, speak of the devil, the pump is the number one failure in these that I've seen. The front pump right here, replace it every time this thing's taken apart. And um, the torque converter is actually a, a common failure point as well. It'll, it'll uh, cause a shutter or it'll just stick and uh, cause a low idle or a stall. Anyway, I like to uh, sit it the other way down, so let any less little bits of fluid drip off of there because you're going to need the case halves to be perfectly clean but when you put it back together with the silicone, otherwise it won't stick. Okay, get your uh, final drive out of here. Inspect it the, for thrust washers popping out which there are no thrust washers popping out here. Check, the, make sure the lock pins are all the way in there. Check the bearing. All right, we're good to go. Slide it out. Sit in the dirtiest part of your bench here. Here's this, uh, here's this sun gear here. Set that aside. Um, go ahead and get your, if you have this, pop it out. It's a fluid baffle. Okay. So with your left hand, go like this and pull straight up while with your other hand, grab like here and pull straight up at the same time. And this and this will, and the chain will come up at the same time. Make sure there's not too much slack in your chain. This is about normal. So yeah, just grab onto both of these and slide them straight up. Just like that. Okay, there's a bearing that goes on the back of here. Usually it stays right here, which it is. It feels good to me. And uh, this final drive bearing feels good as well. So next, go ahead and pull your parking paw out. Pull this pin up here. Pull the parking paw out. Inspect it for scoring or damage. And uh, next, you're going to want to... Uh, Take these two eight millimeter bolts out here and right here. Pull this out, that's a, a fluid uh, capacitor, I guess you'd call it, for uh, flat towing. It kind of holds fluid up and splashes it all over here. Um, and this is just the baffle support here for that, right there. A common issue here is uh, the snap ring will rotate like this and break the case. <clears throat> There's no snap ring rotation here. And the case is in good condition. So next you're, you're going to want to get a uh, small pry bar or a big flathead screwdriver. Pop this snap ring all the way out and get it out of the way. And get a new one. Get a new snap ring to put back in there. But yeah, just pop that out. All right. I like to sit everything, like I like to pick everything out of a transmission, flip it over like that and sit it down like that. So I know what order it came out in. All right, now uh, one by one, I'm gonna pull the forward clutch components out. Here's the uh, pressure plate for the forward clutch. And uh, there's all the frictions and steels here. Do this with one hand. <laughs> yeah, just one by one slide, pull everything out. Inspect for any burn marks and uh, inspect to make sure that the discs are straight. If they're bent, that means something got hot there. The forward clutch got hot, which would indicate a 
center support issue, which is where the uh, forward clutch piston resides. Uh, this is the uh, wave spring here, wave plate. It only goes in one direction. Like this is the only way it's going to go in. You're going to want to make sure every everything's in alignment down there when you go back together with it. Um, but generally, it all goes in one direction there, so you can't mix it up. Forward sun shell here. Yeah, that's what it is. The bushings are usually fine in these. They don't have issues, but check for scoring on the teeth here, which should be wear from the clutch plates. Okay, here's a uh, planetary. Don't usually see issues out of them, but uh, inspect the planetary teeth. Inspect the ring gear here. <laughs> Hands are slippery and wet. <laughs> Got it in. <laughs> Alright, so there's two bearings in here now. It feels good. Sit them in there where they belong. Some of these bearings are directional, so just keep note of which way they go. Alrighty, I'm going to go ahead and pull the center support out now. Make sure your two uh, rubber feed tubes are out, otherwise it'll bind up. So let me show you what I do here. Um, actually, I'll just demonstrate. At this point, grab this with both hands and pull straight up, and it'll gut the rest of the transmission. A little something like that. Once again, I just grabbed onto that shaft, pulled straight up, and it pulled the rest of the guts out. And uh, the only thing left down in here is the intermediate clutch piston, which I don't normally see issues out of. That is the, this right here is the direct support tower. Make sure the ceiling rings on them are in good condition. Make sure there's no scoring or damage along the top here, which would indicate issues with the direct drum bushing. But uh, this one is fine. I've got that upside down draining. All right, boys, you can go ahead and get your center support off of here. Sit it upside down into the stack up. Just by the way, that is a very common failure point. It'll, uh... yeah, <laughs> the, uh, the uh, forward clutch will wear into the center support and lose pressure, and that'll, uh, yeah, just go ahead and replace the center support every time you're in here. Um, and uh, here's your low reverse, low reverse clutches. Sit them upside down on here. Check them for burn marks. And I don't see any burn marks. Okay. Here's another uh, planetary. Good condition. And uh, sun gear good shape. Sit it in there. Two bearings, check them. Another bearing. Alrighty. Another planetary. Okay, so next you've got the uh, one-way clutch. Make sure it uh, only spins one way. Difficult with one hand. Yeah, there we go. That's good. One little burn mark, not a big deal. It's, that would be wear or slippage from the intermediate clutch. It causes, that causes that. Here's your intermediate clutches. You may still have some that's stuck to the bottom of the transmission case. Just a little bit of burn marks on it. A little bit. Probably go ahead and replace all these. Here's the rest of the intermediate clutch down here. It's kind of st stuck underneath here. It's fine. Here's the uh, sun shell that goes next to the direct and overdrive drum. 
I call it the wagon wheel. Okay. Now, once again, this is the direct and overdrive drum right here. The overdrive is inside of here. You uh, take this uh, snap ring out inside of here to uh, get to that, and all the clutches come out. And then if you want to pull the overdrive piston out, you need to come back here and get that little snap ring out of the bottom. Oh my goodness, that's a dirty table that I have this on. But yeah, there's a little, see that little snap ring down there? You gotta get that out. And then you'll be able to gut all of this here. And then for the direct clutch, you need to uh, get the special service tool for this transmission and bring it to a press and push down on this outer shell here and then remove that snap ring. Do not go too far or you will break that tab. And from there, the direct clutches will come out and your transmission will be fully disassembled. I hope this video helps you out. Let me know if you have any questions. I usually respond within 20 or 30 minutes. I have a Discord group and a Facebook group for you to ask your questions. Have a great day. Thank you for watching.